welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Maggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. In today's show, I'm delighted to speak with Liam Ryan. Liam, you are an entrepreneur, public speaker, property investor, mentor, author, podcaster, and a true family man. <laughs> in your uh, property business, you have raised over eight million pounds in uh, joint venture finance and have built a great community around you. You are the co-founder of Assets for Life and you are passionate about helping budding property entrepreneurs to start and grow their uh, property business. Liam, welcome to the show. It's my real pleasure to speak with you today. Wow, brilliant. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Aggie. We've been connected now for, I think, about four years, mm-hmm. uh, which is, mm-hmm. wow, it's gone, it's gone really quick. So yeah, thanks for having me on the show. I'm hoping I can supply some great value and content out to your audience and I'm we can sh- ins- I'm sure. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Liam, um, can I ask with a little bit of background? Uh, I know you had a, a turbulent story, but uh, I want you to isolate in terms of uh, maybe personal development, some key defining moment in your journey that has led you in a way or the other to where you are now. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And I think we all have moments in our life where we can turn left or turn right. And we make decisions based on our environment, the way we feel, the people that are around us. And uh, I've had quite a lot of those moments in my life. Uh, one of my first memories was my mum and dad breaking up when I was just uh, a toddler. And uh, yeah, just when I was, a, you know, two, two and a half, three years of age. And uh, I remember choosing to live with my mum. And I've always gotten really well with my dad. Uh, we were distanced for some time, but we we sort of made amends. And uh, we, we ended up having a really good relationship. So, you know, from a young age, I became a mummy's boy. And also from a young age, I felt like I really needed to protect my mum. So I grew up ahead of my age, to be fair. And uh, we didn't have any money when we were growing up. Like my mum really struggled. We lived on council estates. It was really hard for my mum to put food on the table. Uh, She had a bad uh, second marriage. And one of my memories was me and my brother, Austin. So when I was six, my brother was born from my mum's second marriage. Mm -hmm. And then a few years after that, uh, we were living in a woman's refuge And one of the memories that I had was sitting around in the cold, huddled together, and we were sharing and eating spaghetti bolognese out of a can. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't live my life like this. This is not how we should be living. And after that, I became really obsessed with material items. Mm -hmm. So what I would do on a Saturday, because we didn't have any money for me to go to the sports club or join a football team or couldn't do anything. So on a Saturday, I'd walk down the, 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 the flights of stairs in the council flat and I'd walk over to the square. And, you know, on a lot of council estates, you have like a little shopping area. You've got the barbers, you've got the fish yeah. and chip shop, you've got the laundrette. Uh, there was a co-op there. And then there was this small news agents. So I used to walk over there on a Saturday, walk into the news agents go to the back of the news agent, sit myself on a little ledge, and I would just look at magazines for hours and hours and hours. Uh, um, private jets, fast cars. And I became really obsessed with opulent items. And even then at the age of like seven, eight, nine, I used to visualize being a multimillionaire. And I think subconsciously I made the decision at that time that I was going to become uh, really successful. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I was going to become really successful. And I, and I became really driven. And as I went into secondary school, um, inside, inside, I never really felt good about myself. So I definitely had this void. 
I was quite nervous. I was a bit shy, but anyone looking in would think I was a happy-go-lucky kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I joined in with the sports at school. I'd done okay during school. I struggled a bit because I used to struggle with reading and writing with dyslexia. But as I went into secondary school, my mum introduced me to a friend of hers called Tim. And Tim was a market trader. He wasn't any old market trader. Like He was the dude, right? He was the guy. <laughs> and he took me under his wing. And I used to go to these markets on a Saturday and Sunday. And he had the big van. And he used to do the prize giveaways. And he'd have the headphone on his head. And he'd be selling all of this stuff. And then what I said to Tim, I said, look, Tim, I said, there's a market in the school for this. I said, why don't I sell some of this in school? Mm. So as I went through my years, I think it was about year eight, end of year eight, start of year nine. I used to go to school with two bags. (laughs) I'd have my school bag, right, with my pens and papers in. I wasn't really interested in that one. And then I'd sneak in my big Adidas bag. And that had perfumes and jeans and T-shirts and pretty much anything you wanted. I became the kid at school that could get you it. And I started to buy and sell. So I'd I'd buy it off Tim. I'd sell it in school with a markup. I'd make a bit of money. Tim would make a bit of money. And then the school kids were like really happy. And it gave me massive purpose. And through that process, Aggie, I learned how to negotiate. I learned the power of buying and selling with a profit. And of course, I made money and I just spent it on, you know, Mm -hmm. sweets and whatever you spend it on when you're in year nine. So I I think, you know, growing up in poverty and living with my mum and my brother going through that struggle, that switched something in me to just go and make it happen. And I said, mum, I'm going to look after you. And I don't know about you or anyone else that's listening to this. There comes a point where you will do whatever you need to do for your family. And that's what I did. And I, I just happened to do it as a kid rather than as an adult. Mm-hmm. So that was, a, that, w- that was a turning point for me. I've got other things. If you want me to go into more, I'm sure stuff will come up as we talk. But uh, I think that was an important part of my life. And uh, it's something I really enjoyed. There are a couple of things that I... Uh, made a note about what you just said and uh, one of them was that you were visualizing since you were seven you would look at magazines and uh, it is something uh, a trait of uh, the way that you think or you uh, your mindset being able to visualize and being um, deliberate on visualizing and I think uh, many people miss that uh, ability well, what are your thoughts of, of yeah, visualization uh, as such yeah it's very easy for lots of people in their life to only see the negative mm-hmm. and there's lots of people out there right now which are in a very very difficult situation mm-hmm. you know we're going through a pandemic unfortunately millions of people are losing their livelihoods their jobs and it's sometimes hard to see through the trees however however Every single person can dream big. Every single person can get a pen and paper and they can literally write down what they want the next chapter in their life to look like. And I truly believe that if you visualize it, meditate around it, write it down, have a vision board, tell people about your vision, walk, talk, act as though you're already in that place. Now, of course, you've got to take the action and you've got to take steps and you have to roll your sleeves up. But I truly believe visualization is so important and it might not come as quick as you want it to come, but it will come at some point in the future. And visualization is just one part of success, but it is an essential part. Um, I, I believe it's very important. And, you know, I visualize, fantasize a lot. You know, I've got a good life. I've got an amazing business, a beautiful family. But I still visualize what we're going to be in five years, six years. I actually do something called the vivid vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, Me and my business partner, Jay, do it. And once or twice a year, we go away. Uh, We'll go somewhere nice. We'll turn our phones, our laptops off, and we'll get with nature. And what we will do for two or three days is collectively, we will do vision work. And we will plan 
what our company looks like every three years, down to what car we're driving, how many teams we have, how does the office look, uh, what's on the wall, uh, what departments we've got, what are the products we're selling, and we will get really deep in as much detail as possible to how our life and our business is going to work. And um, the vision seems to be coming true <laughs> because we're, we're driving towards that, right? You know, and we visualize it. Liam, this is amazing. I mean, it's a, a fantastic. The, the, the level of detail that uh, you're explaining now of the, the vivid vision. Uh, how often do you review it? I mean, repeat it. I mean, you you said you do it every six months, or uh, yeah. But uh, do you look at it every day? How does it work in between? So, so what we do, we do a three-year vivid vision, yeah, for our business and personal lives for our family. Mm -hmm. uh, we also get our staff involved, so we'll have like a vision meeting with our staff, and we'll okay. get input from them and where do they see the company going and we get them to work on their own personal vision as well right mm -hmm. and then um you know i speak to my wife and i speak to my kids and i get them to visualize it so we do a three-year vivid vision but then what we do is it's a document we have it's about 15 16 pages uh, we share that document with our team members with our jv partners it's really good it's a it's a really powerful document and then what we do we just visit it maybe once or twice a year Mm -hmm. uh, we've not visited it this year as of yet. I believe we've done it about 18 months ago. So we're due to revisit it. So me and Jay will visit. And then we might change one or two things. We might make a few changes, but we don't change it that much. That's amazing. 15 pages. Yeah? <laughs> That's uh, the level of detail. You, you're giving me some great ideas of things, things that I could <laughs> implement to yeah, take it to the yeah. next level. Uh, Liam, there was uh, one other thing uh, when you were saying your story um, that you started uh, having this business uh, mentality or the entrepreneur mindset, if you want, from from a very young age and because of your uh, experience with uh, not having money. So you've had that business element in you most of your life or pretty much all of your life. What about uh, people? I'm sure you see that... Uh, you encountered people who have never had that, but they would like to have it. And uh, I'm sure you see some um, stumbling blocks that they uh, stumble upon. So what are your uh, thoughts on that? On someone who wants to, uh, let's say, get more elements of uh, a mindset of uh, an entrepreneur? Okay, good. So um, one of the most important things for entrepreneurs, business owners is to focus on something that you're passionate about. That's really important. You know, there'd be no point in me trying to build an accountancy business into a multi, because I freaking hate accounts. I hate numbers. I'm not good with spreadsheets, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find something that you're passionate about. You also need to tap into a marketplace which is scalable, mm -hmm. okay, which you can grow. It's really important to add value to the universe. So does your thing, can it add value to the universe? Mm -hmm. um, is there a vision attached to that? What's your vision? What's your mission? What's your legacy statement? And if you've got a passion and you can go and help people provide a good service, sell a good product, and it's scalable, mm -hmm. in today's technology, you can get your message out there really quickly through social media. Like you can put a Facebook ad up at five pound a day and that can be getting thousands and thousands of views. You can generate leads for a couple of pounds a lead. It doesn't actually cost a lot of money these days to really build your brand. And part of what we do here at Assets for Life, we are um, we're a production company, yeah, a media company. As much as we do property, we are a media company. So um, once you decide on what it is you want to do, then it's really important to understand business fundamentals. Get a great mentor. Get around some other business owners that have done what you want to do. Pay them money to mentor you and then do what they say. So I've not got to where I am today on my own. I made a lot of mistakes in my 20s. I've got to where I am today 
because I've got people around me. And one of the key things that every single person, be it you're a business owner or not, every person should understand is the art of selling and negotiating. But most people, they're like, oh, I don't want to be a salesman. I don't like selling. Well, I'm not being funny. If you don't know how to sell, you're never going to grow a business because nearly every conversation you have is a form of a sale. So what happened for me when I was 15 years of age, mm -hmm. I left school uh, after school and I walked into Colchester. I walked along Head Street and in the window, I saw this sign, big yellow sign, door canvases, massive commission, 16 years and over. Well, I was only 15, right? <laughs> anyway, I went round the back of the office I took off my blazer, I took off my school tie, I dumped my bag behind the bin and I walked in, put on a bit of a deeper voice. <laughs> now, if anyone knows Zenith Windows, they know they don't really care if you're 16 or not. So I got the job on the spot. And there I was 20 minutes later in the back of a car driving to Ipswich to go and knock on doors to generate leads for sales reps to go in and sell windows. I was pretty nervous, right? Day one, no leads. Day two, no leads. Day three, no leads. My mum's going, you're being ripped off. It's slavery. Don't be commissioned. Get a job. I said, no, mum, if I get a lead and it sits, I'm going to make £25. I was committed. Day five, I get my first lead. It's an immediate and I made bag myself 25 quid. And that was the start. And in that process, I learned the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. So never as an entrepreneur, business owner or anyone be afraid of a no. That's when your job starts. And I had hundreds, thousands of doors slammed in my face, but I persisted every night after school, knocking on doors, weekends. I left school, went to college for about three minutes. I was like, this is not me. And I became a full time door canvasser. And I, I actually became the UK's number one door canvasser, which was really good. So persistence is important understanding foundations and my real big tip is uh, never be shy about learning how to sell and negotiate mm -hmm. and anyone can do it i wasn't born a salesman i was born a baby i was born a baby like everyone else selling is a skill that everyone can master and once you understand that you'll be able to get more sales more leads because you've got to sell to your team i have to sell myself to my team i have to sell myself to my power team and I do that because, you know, I've un I understand that process. Mm -hmm. You actually read my, uh, the question I was about to ask you about this uh, way of uh, the art of selling and uh, negotiations that it is not something that we are born with because there, there are many people who think I'm not good at selling. And even selling on its own has a, in many people's uh, mind, a negative connotation, like it is something uh, bad. And what you said, it's very important to reframe the, the term selling and put it in under a different uh, way of uh, looking at it. Hmm? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Because at, when I was at school, my teacher said, whatever you do in life, don't become a salesperson. Right. Okay. Salespeople are bad. Right. And yeah. Some salespeople are bad. Mm. Hey, some doctors are bad. Some nurses are bad. Absolutely. Some teachers are bad. Mm -hmm. Some builders are bad. In every industry, you get good guys, you get bad guys. Good cops, bad cops, right? Selling is actually caring. And if you've got a product, if you've got a service, if you've got an idea and you truly believe in that, and that idea is going to bring massive value to the person you're talking to, then it is your responsibility to enhance other people's lives through your products and services. So it's how you look at it. Um, and some people have had a bad experience. Maybe they got dodgy car salesmen or dodgy double glazing salesmen. Well, hey, I'm not being funny. We all have bad relationships, right? If you go on a bad date, you don't stop dating. If you had a bad marriage, a lot of people get married again. So you've got to keep going. If you've got a bad business partner, well, you try and find a good business partner and you learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just think if everyone was to see it like that, there'd be more confidence. Selling is not being aggressive. Selling is not manipulating. Uh, selling is not conning people. 
selling is just helping someone buy and helping them make the best decision that they can make. If they do it, great. If they don't, I still love you, care about you. It's no problem. Maybe you'll come to me in the future. Um, and that's why I feel selling is an a, a absolutely instrumental part of success when it comes to business. And it's just learning actually how to communicate. Mm -hmm. It's just being more confident and saying, hey, look, I've got this idea. These are the features. These are the benefits. This is how I think it's going to impact your life. Yeah. Do you like the idea? Yes or no? Okay, great. Let's go. Awesome. Liam, I wanted also to ask you another element of uh, mindset is something that you teach specifically and it is the uh, mindset around wealth and money in general so i see you smiling already so give me your thoughts on uh, maybe what what distinguishes the people who have who are struggling with this and the people who go to the other side because i think it's a, a mindset shift maybe not one but uh, some elements of a mindset mm. shift Yeah, I think this is a really important conversation to be had. And to be fair, I could probably talk about this all day. Uh, <laughs> money and wealth is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, but actually, once upon a time, uh, I was really nervous with money. I was really scared with money. And uh, I believe that you have to go on an internal journal uh, journey in order to receive external benefits. Mm -hmm. And for many, many years, I was broken inside. I was spiritually sick. I didn't feel good about myself. I wasn't very confident. And um, I started to make a lot of money when I was young. You know, I, I was making money in the bloody playground. I was making a thousand pound a week knocking on doors at the age of 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. I moved out abroad and I was making tens of thousands of pounds. And um, what happens and what happened to me, and this happens to almost everyone out there, is you spend Sorry, you earn and you spend. Yeah. Yeah. If you earn more, you spend more. If you earn less, you get in bad debt because you want to keep up your spending. And this is why people get in bad debt, right? I never understood the power of investing and the power of compounding. Mm -hmm. So I was making all of this money. I was spending it all. Yeah, okay. I made some investments as well. And then it ran out. I made some big, bad decisions. My businesses struggled. 2008 came. I bought businesses. I bought property that wasn't working well. And I actually ended up losing over 2 million euros. This was back in 2012. I moved back to the UK, set up another business. That didn't do too well. Lost money there. And I found myself pretty much back at square one. And I thought to myself, what's going wrong? What am I doing wrong? And I didn't understand money. I didn't know how to, I knew how to make it, but I didn't know how to manage it. And I didn't know how to multiply it. They're the three things when it comes to wealth, making money, managing money, multiplying money. And then I was introduced to the power of compound. And then I was introduced to some really smart people. They're now in my wealth team. And what I decided to do was rather than continue just to get more sales, more leads and keep growing business, I switched my focus into investing in assets. So everyone that's listening now, remember, income follows assets. So if you focus on assets, that will give you the income and you invest as much as you can, even if you can do five pound a week. Well, that's 20 pound a month. That's 240 pound a year. If you compound that at, say, 25%, you double your money every three years. At 20%, you double your money every four years. Mm -hmm. And that's what I started to do, Aggie. I just started to learn about investing. And rather than just spending it on stuff that makes me feel good for about five minutes, and then I feel bad. So I'm always an emotional buyer. Um, I decided to start investing into different asset classes, property being one of them. And then, of course, I've got other asset classes that I invest into as well. Um, but everyone can learn that as well. But in order to do that, you've got to get around some investors. You've got to spend time, read books on money, learn about investing mm -hmm. and uh, understand the power of a compounding. Liam, uh, apart from the, the, the how, the learning, what you were saying, you mentioned uh, something about being spiritually sick and... Do you want to expand on, no, not your personal circumstances if you don't want, but uh, how this 
can stand in the way of us having a, a, a wealth mindset. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't mind sharing my stuff. You know, I'm pretty open about my journey. I think it's important to share my journey. Mm-hmm. Hopefully someone's listening can identify and give them some uh, some little golden nuggets. Yeah. So I, I don't really know where the spiritual sickness came from. I just knew that I was, I was always ner- like even just walking to school, I was nervous. Being around people, I was nervous. But I was too afraid to tell people I was nervous. So I just put on a sm- fight smile, mm-hmm. got on with it. And what happened, uh, what happened is um, as I left school, I started to, I was introduced to alcohol. And when I had some alcohol, mm, that made me feel good, warm and fuzzy. And all of a sudden I could, I could talk to girls and oh, I felt like I was a bit more of a action man. And, you know, alcohol done something for me, which I wasn't getting as a, a as someone that did drink alcohol. And then I found drugs and, uh, you know, drugs started on a you know Friday and Saturday night. Then it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Then it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Before I knew it, I was a daily user in my early 20s when I moved abroad. And I was addicted to cocaine and alcohol. And in my early 20s, hey, man, I I could be up all night and still go do a day's graft. And all was okay. I was loving life. I loved the party life, earning lots of money, living overseas, traveling the world. And then there came a day where it went out of control. And I couldn't stop. And things around me started falling apart. And I had several hospital visits. I was hooked up to machines. I was, I nearly died a couple of times. But I was an addict and alcoholic. I couldn't break free from that. So cut a long story short, 2005, I went to rehab. Got 60, 62 days clean. And then I relapsed. 2008, I'm back in rehab again. I knew 30 days wasn't going to be long enough. So I fly out to South Africa and I spent three and a half years in South Africa. I moved part of my company there and it was there that I really discovered myself. I got therapy. I was in rehab and it was the first time in my life that I take, took a good look at myself and my ego was removed and I was open to change to say, you know what? You might make a lot of money, Liam, but you don't know how to do life. You have no idea how to build relationships. I can't love anyone because I don't love myself. And I was full of rage and resentment and had all this baggage. So I started to move through a process like, of clearing my the wreckage of my past and making amends, working on my spirituality. And what happened is I went from being a very selfish individual, only caring about my own needs Hey, I needed to do that, right? I was in survival skills from the age of eight, protecting my mum. That's all I knew was how to survive. And I went from becoming selfish to becoming selfless and putting other people before me. So I made it my mission to go and help people, help people in recovery. And then I started to build my businesses. So a lot of people, they use outside things like shopping and new cars, to fix the inside, but it never fixes the inside. So I just feel it's really important for people to work on their inner sides. You can do that through meditation. You can do that through therapy. You can do it through talking to people, being honest, written work. And look, how can you improve yourself to not only give you a better quality of life, but to have more impact on the people around you? So it's been a, it's been a great journey. Hey, I still I still get a bit sick from time to time, and that selfishness can come out. Um, but but generally speaking, um, you know, I try and put other people first before me. Thank you for sharing that uh, story with vulnerability. It's uh, it's a beautiful uh, message that comes uh, through that. Yeah. Liam, you you mentioned the word uh, spirituality. What what does that mean to you? That term spiritual. Yeah, great. Well, I just just finished on that last point. So as of September 25th, mm-hmm. a few months ago, yeah. I, I was nine years, no cocaine, no alcohol. Nine years. So, like, And honestly, if, if I can do it, other people will do it. But I got a sponsor. I went through the 12 steps. You know, you have to put action in. Yeah. Spirituality for me is uh, the three pillars, the triangle. And it's about being connected. It's what we call mind, spirit, and body. Okay. Okay. So if you look after your spirit, your mind, you look after your spirit, you look after your body, it's all connected. 
Okay, so spirituality for me is about self-love. So loving yourself, Mm -hmm. putting other people before you, like ask yourself the question, what can I do today to add more value to my kid's life? What can I do to add more value to my business partner? What can I do to add more value to my clients, my products, my wife, my children? What can I do to do that? That for me is about spirituality. And it's about taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Routine is important. Sleep well, eat well, exercise. It's all connected. That's fantastic. I was taking notes now. This is a very uh, a great uh, way of describing it. Uh, <laughs> Liam, um, let me ask you also some quick fire questions to start wrapping things up. So... Uh, What does personal development mean to you as a term? Well, personal development to me, that's a really good question. I've never actually thought about it is what do I mean? So personal development for me would mean um, working on yourself daily to become a better version of who you already are. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, let's say you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self. What's the one piece of advice you would give him? Invest. (laughs) Invest. I don't even think I tell myself to not use drink and drugs because it was part of my journey and it led me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. So I don't even think I tell myself not to do that. I would tell myself, earn and invest. And the quicker you can learn to invest, even as a teenager, your money will grow for you rapidly. And by the time you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, you can get to a position where you never have to worry about money ever again. You're not reliant on a job. You're not reliant on the business. You're not reliant on the government. If COVID came again 10 times over, it's not going to affect you financially. That is so important is to have investments that give you the income, that's the income that you use to feed your life. Mm -hmm. If you want a job or a business, then that's just a bonus. You're doing it because you love it, not because you need to pay your rent or your mortgage. Amazing. Um, And let's say you had the magic wand and you could wave it and change something in the world uh, as it is today. What would you change? Mm, Great question. hatred there's a lot of there's a lot of hatred in the world isn't there people Mm -hmm. hating on each other because of the color of their skin or the way they talk or the way they look or who they support you know look at what's going on in the us at the moment the whole country is divided over the presidency you know there's people riots beating everyone up I, i would love to bring more more love to the world like where no one seems to care for anyone it's like we're imploding on ourselves so i would love to bring more love to the world and respect people to respect one another and don't get so wrapped up in someone's opinion like who cares if they think like that who cares it's not going to affect my life i'm just going to crack on people do get wrapped up in things that they can't control it's the circle of influence yeah i'm sure you've heard of that right so um but that would be my thing more more love in the world less hatred Yeah, amazing. Uh, Liam, um, how can people connect with you and find out more about uh, what you do? Yeah, good. So if people want to connect, they, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can uh, go onto YouTube and type in Assets for Life. And there's a whole load of YouTube videos teaching you about property and investing. You can get me on Instagram. So my name is Liam Ryan Wealth. So get yourself on Instagram. I do a lot of stuff on Instagram, really powerful content that I'm sure will help you change. And of course, feel free to find me on Facebook, uh, Liam Ryan. You'll find me there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And my website is www.assetsforlife.co.uk. Um, and uh, you know assets for life is a property investment and educational company Uh, we help people with property business investing mindset confidence social media and uh, we've got lots of uh, really great partners and jv people that we work with 
So, yeah, we love what we do. We've got a, a great reputation. And, yeah, feel free to just come and hook us up and look at our stuff. Thanks. Uh, I was about to ask you, is there anything in particular that you were hoping to discuss today or you would like uh, the conversation to go towards and uh, we have uh, missed it or neglected it? I think this is so important, right? So for years, I was a lone ranger. Mm -hmm. I had trust issues. I didn't let people get too close. I'd done everything on my own, right? Like everything on my own, yeah? And I was pretty successful up to a certain point. And then my own mindset went backwards and I lost momentum and I ended up losing a lot of money. So my one big message really for today is you're not alone unless you choose to be alone. You can make the decision now to get around some new great people. And I'm sure there's people listening to this where they have a lot of negativity in their life. Maybe even their husband or wife, their partners, their children, their uncles and uncles. They are sometimes the worst people to be around because they bring their own baggage and their own negativity to the party. And then you as a person, you're scared to do the thing you want because you don't want to upset your partner or your kids and they're holding you back. And, you know, maybe they're saying, well, don't get into business. It's a crazy idea. Just go and work 40 hours a week for 40 years and, you know, retire on a crappy pension or, you know, money's bad. You know, if you've got money, it's not a good thing. Maybe they've had some bad experience and they're putting that onto you. Now, I'm not saying go and get a divorce, right? I'm not saying go and get a divorce off the back end of this podcast or disown your children. What I'm saying is become a leader in your own household. Be the person that's going to stand up and be accountable and say, you know what? Okay, you might not like the fact that I want to now build a property business and I'm going to go and get mentored and go on some training. But you know what? It's not your life. It's my life. And I'm allowed to do what I want. You might not agree with it. I'm still going to love you, but I'm going to go and do it anyway. And I'm going to give it a go. And if I fail, then it's on me. But I know I'm not going to fail because I've got new people around me. I'm going to go and hang out with some successful property investors. I'm going to go and hang out with people that are walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So it is important to create a new environment around you of people that are going to push you, keep you accountable, motivate you, inspire you. They're doing the very thing that you want to do. Get around those people, lead from the front. And in a lot of cases, You then have a positive impact on your children, your wife, your husband. They see what you're doing. All of a sudden, you've got more energy. All of a sudden, you're walking in with a smile on your face. All of a sudden, you're sleeping better and you're actually working towards a legacy, a long term. Most people have a short term vision. You've got to have a long term vision. And that, I, I would say, is really important. Don't let someone else close to you hold you back or allow their negativity to get in the way of your success. Ask the question, how much money you got in the bank? How successful are you? How many companies have you got? How many, you know, the, the, the chances are the people giving you the negativity are not in the best situation anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say, that they never get the advice from someone who's not doing what you want to be doing. So if your friend is broke, you can't take advice about money. Or if they're divorced, They can't give you advice about a relationship. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it does make sense. Liam, uh, do you want to share with us uh, a big breakthrough that you had this uh, last year? So I think on a personal level, on a personal level, um, as a result of going into lockdown, it's had a really positive impact on my relationship with my wife and my children. Mm -hmm. I've always had a good relationship with them, but I'm a busy guy, right? And sometimes business takes over. Mm -hmm. And certainly pre-COVID, you know, we were working a lot of weekends, running events up and down the country. So that's given me a change in mindset. Uh, and now I'm, I pretty much do the school run every day. Yeah. Uh, so I was on the school run this morning. I, I think I'm due to go get my little girl later on. I hang out with my kids a lot more. And what we've done is we changed the business model because we had to, 
and we went a lot more online. So Zoom's been brilliant. We've done some of our best property deals. But I think a big breakthrough is spending more time with me, more time with my family and having a cutoff as well. Like, so, so normally like seven o'clock now, six, you know, I'll do the bath and uh, have some dinner. I might then do another e extra hour on the business, but pretty much unless I'm doing a webinar, seven o'clock, that's it. Phones away, laptops down. And that's a big breakthrough for me. I've, I've never really been like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm so <laughs> obsessed with, with business and success. Uh, and my wife, she said, you, you are, you are wonderful to be around and I, and I love you and you know, you're, you're so, so supportive. So that's a big breakthrough on a personal level. I think that's the most important uh, on a business level. Uh, we have done some of our best property deals during Brexit slash COVID. And a lot of people have said, Oh, don't be getting into that. It's COVID it's this recession, man, there's going to be some of the biggest opportunities available right now. When people are scared, that's the time to be greedy, right? Quote from Warren Buffett. And there's a lot of opportunity. And here's the thing, right? This is what people need to understand. When the market is going up and we're in a bull market, there's good deals and bad deals. When the market's going down and we're in re recession and everyone's going crazy and when we're going down, there's good deals and bad deals. So the key thing, it doesn't matter where we're at in the cycle, mm -hmm. is just look for those good deals. And they are out there. So we've done a bungalow in Colchester. Uh, we use none of our own money for the deal. Most of the deals I do, I use none of my own money. It's all with the banks, investors, or development funding. Uh, we bought the property using investor money, buy, refurbished, and we've just refinanced. And because we added value, we got all the money back out. So we're about to pay the investors back. And now me and Jay, we own the house 50-50 in one of our companies. So that's a great deal. And then the second is a much bigger deal. This is my biggest deal so far. It's a um, development. It's in Maidenhead. We completed on it on Friday. Pre-COVID, we were due to buy it for 2.5 million. Post-COVID, we exchanged and completed at 1.9 million. So we was able to get 600,000 pounds off due to the current global situation because the seller became more motivated. Uh, risk for us went up slightly. That's a 26 unit development with a commercial convert with a commercial unit below. Mm -hmm. And we've got a 10 year lease with Superdrug, which values it at 1.7 million. And we're going to build 26. That's in Maidenhead. So that's a massive breakthrough for us. It's uh, 8.7 million GDV. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been done as well using none of our own money. So uh, people say you can't build a portfolio, none of your own money. You can because I've been doing it for five years. Fantastic. Liam, uh, because you've been very generous, I will ask you one last question to share with us. And that would be one big mistake that you've made so we can avoid making the same one ourselves. Okay. preferably during the year but if you want to go back uh, further you can but uh, the last yeah. year would be more interesting yeah so a big mistake in the last year cool that's a really 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 good question a big mistake in the last year i, th I think something which I lose sight of sometimes and something which has an effect so me and jay jay's my business partner right and I love Jay to bits. He's brilliant. Uh, we get on like a house on fire. We both bring value to the company. But I, I would say through COVID, because we've got different sides of the business, something which we have said and we could have done better is better communication between us. Uh, you know, that that's probably one of the things that I would said I want to improve on a lot. Mm -hmm. So me and Jay just need to get time in the diary just once every two weeks and just hang out and chat. And we've not done that as much this year. And that's because, you know, he's busy on development. I've been busy on the other side of the fence and, and it's been go, go, go. And hey, we, we had to make some big changes and we had to get really focused. So um, but that, that would say and that's a good tip for everyone. If you've got a business partner, hang out more and have better communication.
And that coming from you, communication, you who, who teaches <laughs> communication and speaking and you're a master of communication. So yeah. thank you, Liam. Uh, yeah. I want to really thank you for your uh, time and sharing. There were so many valuable items uh, to, to choose from in this conversation. So all the very best with uh, your business, with uh, your family and uh, everything that you uh, do in your life. Uh, any last uh, parting words? I just, just want to say thanks to you, Aggie. You know, your journey has been amazing. You know, the, the podcast that you've launched is absolutely really, really good. And I'm really proud of you. And it's an honor to be here as one of your guests. And I just wanted to just say a big shout out to all the viewers, all the listeners Um, you can have a great life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, it gets tough sometimes, but you can have a great life. And I really thank everyone for tuning in. And please hunt me down at YouTube, Instagram, or uh, the website. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and rate Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts. And also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to become part of an exclusive community, gain access to unique content and at the same time support this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash PDM group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 